Alrighty, howdy neighbors, and welcome back to Under Maintenance. Last time we started with Tristan, who is the nerd guy. Anyway, let's continue. When I woke up the next morning, Tristan is nowhere to be found. Hmm, did he really bail just like that? I just try to place him top to bottom. But the somewhat spacey man with the... Sombre? Green eyes had simply up and vanished. I checked my phone, but there's no message from her either. I asked him why the type, the type to ghost a girl, but there's really no sign of him. Just a fling. I straightened up the apartment, trying not to mope while glancing at my phone from time to time as it lies nestled comfortably in the charging dock. I'm not going to message him. It was just supposed to be a way to kill some time anyway. I make breakfast and get dressed, still glaring at my silent phone all the while. What should I say to him, even if I did send him a message? Why did you go without even saying goodbye? Couldn't even leave a note. I thought maybe we had something, a spark, a little zap. I'm not that desperate. Am I? You know, this is exactly why I stick to husbandos. They never pulled this kind of crap. I was ignoring, of course, the numerous times in heavenly love that the husbandos did, in fact, pull even more egregious kinds of crap. Repeatedly. Nevertheless, I... With my dating life apparently back in the freezer once again, I drew my phone from the charger and tried to see if yesterday's extended maintenance has ended. It has to be done by now, right? I tap through the screens and try to load a game when, inevitably, the whole phone crashes. Kinda go crash a break. I forced it to restart, and it hangs on the pair logo. It hangs. It hangs. Restart. No, still not working. Several swears in a row. After trying for a while to revive it with no success, I'm finally forced to admit defeat. I have to take it to the pair store. I haven't taken my phone to get fixed on a Saturday morning. It's a special kind of hell. Young people everywhere, old people everywhere, families with very small children. Some of them screaming and crying. Everywhere. A lot of them, actually. All of them mixed together. Each one as cranky as the next. To be spending the precious hours of the weekend waiting for their turn. To be upsold on an overcaffeinated, underpaid army of retail employees clad in khaki. I check in and try to find some place out of the toe-crushing path of the runaway stroller to stand and wait for tech support when I hear an increasing ruckus of burn customer dispute cut over the general din. Welcome to the pear store, would you like? Hey, listen here, Sonny. The commercial on TV said that I get 10 ginger bites of data per month, but I can't find them anywhere on this thing. I'll be happy to help you with that, sir. The data is an allowance, it isn't actually stored on your phone. That voice. I spoke from my hiding spot and tried to find the source of it. I don't have to wander very far. What are you, dense? I bought it, and I want to see the data before I bought from you leeches right now. Or I can make sure- oh, so I can make sure you're not ripping me off. I saw one of those funny pictures about it on the internet. I understand your frustration, but I'm afraid there really isn't any other way. You floor workers get more and more useless by the day. I want to speak to your manager. I rubbed my eyes to make sure I wasn't seeing things, but it's still Tristan standing there being chewed out by a particularly obstinate customer. Tristan's cranky customer wants a manager. What should I do? I'm a little bummed out by him ghosting me, but the fellow retail worker, I can't leave him I can't leave him to be torn apart by a crotchety, self-entitled customer. The customer defini is definitely not always right. I stole over to where Tristan and the men are standing, slipping into the customer service persona I used at work. I set my face into the biggest, biggest smile. 
the pitch of my voice raising at least two octaves as I call out to them. Nai, good morning! I'm the manager. I heard somebody asking for me. Susan's eyes go wide as saucers as he looks at me from me to the customer and back to me, but he doesn't call my bluff. Uh, oh, hey, boss. Well, you see here, I've been telling one of your... Oh, I've been trying to tell your associate here that I want to see my data ginger bites. Now I want this made right, or I'll have to take my business elsewhere. I'll give you a bad review on the phone survey, too. Now, now, let's not be hasty. I understand we haven't met your expectations today, and I hear you. It's very embarrassing, but I have to admit, this is all my fault. Tristan is a new employee, and I'm afraid I haven't had the time to train him on the data storage display feature. Oh. I did finish the rest of the training manual, though. And you're doing a great job! But now that I'm here, we can go... Oh, we can all go over it together. Sound good? Alright. The customer gives Tristan his phone, and I show him how to unlock the phone storage display, giving him directions for how to navigate to the phone's overall storage. And finally, click storage. So... Because here you have 102 gigabytes of available storage on your phone. He turns around the phone to show him the screen. He's like completely truthful. Ah, now that's more like it. Well, what else do I get from our trouble? Well, you a coupon for 20% off your next visit. If it doesn't come in a month, come back and ask for me, the manager. Thanks for visiting the Paris store. Apparently mollified. The cantankerous customer shuffles off to find his next unsuspecting service employee to terrorize, leaving me alone with Tristan. So? <laughs> we... Uh... Meet again. Yeah, good job, Dick. Yeah, hi again. I have to chill with my phone. It's stuck in the boot screen. Can you help me? He scratches the back of his neck a little confused. You're not going to chew me out about last night? I look around the crowded store, observing the little boy stick his finger up his nose and wipe the evidence on the display for boot Bluetooth headsets. Nope, I'm good on that for right now. Clearly you're really busy, and we were just having some fun. You don't mean anything. I really just wanted to get my phone fixed. Can you fix it, please? Yes! Uh, yeah, yes, I can do that, I think. Let me see it, please. Just takes my phone and starts troubleshooting. First, I'm gonna try a hard res restart. I already tried that three times. And I tried the power cycle and I tried to power cycle it. And plugging it in directly into the wall with two different cables. None of it worked. Wow, you really know your stuff. I know how to use a rooster search. Hmm. But I think I see what your problem is. He reaches through his pockets to fish out a pen. Sometimes on newer models, the power button has a tendency to shift out of their housing and gets stuck in a permanent on position. Did you restart your phone this morning? He gives the conversation. Oh, he gives up the conversation as he takes a thin arm of the cap and carefully slots it into the space between the power button and the phone housing, not taking his eyes from it. Yeah, I did. Officially, I'm supposed to send these kinds of phones out to repair. Cost 150, but. But. <laughs> but why do that when you can use a pen and push it back into place yourself? Just in pockets the writing utensil and wait for the. As my phone finishes its normal boot cycle. There. All better. Wow. Oh, really? Wow, Tristan, thank you so much. You're my hero. Just doing my job. Except, not at all. Cool. He has the phone back to me. Okay, well, thanks again. And I guess it's goodbye. So, goodbye, Tristan. I turn and start to walk away. Hey. Hey, wait. Let me argue my case about last night. A few minutes. That's all it'll take. Okay. Let's look somewhere else. It's time for me a break anyway. I follow him outside the store. Although the scenery isn't much improved, we find a corner out of the way where we can have a bit more privacy. So... So, you've got the Paris store, huh? That's what you meant when you said you help people with technology for work. Yeah. I should have just said so. 
but it's not exactly an accomplishment to write home about. That's an understatement. If I were you, I definitely wouldn't want to talk about it. I at least get to write home that I'm management. Is that what you took off? You don't want me to find out about your job? No, that's not it at all. I woke up late this morning because I missed my alarm after my phone died overnight. I had to come straight here to just to make it on time. I was going to message you as soon as I went on break. Scout's honor. I wanted to leave a note, but I couldn't find a pen or paper in your apartment. And I didn't want you to wake up to me sneaking around. Uh, then why didn't you just wake me up on purpose? You looked so cute. I can bear to. Sorry, I really screwed up. Oh, well... Okay. That's actually really sweet. Finding it hard to seem mad at him. I take a step closer toward him, and he meets me halfway. I accept your apology. And I want you to know that I slept really well last night. He leans forward, resting his forehead against mine. Relief palpable in his posture. Yeah, me too. I really would like to see you again. Can I take you out on a normal, regular date? I know this really beautiful park where we can have a picnic lunch. Feck yeah, Tristan. Uh, sure, why not? Great! This Saturday? I'll pick you up at 11.30. Hey, are you dead? Come on, answer. I should have never told you to go to meet someone. It's me from beyond the stars. Everything is bright. There's edible gold and houses made of chocolate. You made me worried. Sorry. The morning was chaotic. Remember that guy, Tristan? Yes, that's why I was worried. Well, he left me in the middle of the night. Uh, what the fuck? I feel bad it's worse. When I woke up this morning, my phone was completely bricked. What? Okay, so you got it fixed? Wanna hear the craziest part? I found Tristan at the Paris store. He works there. He got ghosted for a job. I mean, yeah, but I understand. Plus, it seems like an awful job. They'd probably fire him for being a minute late. You're yeah, empathizing with him. Of course. Nothing worse than rude customers. Girl, don't I know. I was a little irritated, but I understood. We talked over the misunderstanding, too. He'll be taking me on a date to the park. Yeah? That's romantic. Have fun and keep me updated. We never played a game! Just in chapter 4, what about a game? In the big one eye, the whole week passed by. I survived two double shifts and one double coupon sale disaster before it's finally, finally time for my Saturday picnic date with Tristan. That sounds like a hell of a week. Holy crap. Hey! Hey, Tristan. Hi. You look really nice today. Thanks, you too. Are you ready to go? Yep. We're sitting on the sidewalk, grinning at each other in a warm, brilliant sunshine for a long while. We were jolted back to reality by an abrupt honking of a car horn in the distance. Oh! So, should I order a hyper or. Um. No, I have a ride. A car. I have one. It was in the direction of a handful of cars parked in the street behind us. A sleek, modern electric car, your standard average middle of the road being potatoes, regular sedan, an ancient boxy tank of a vehicle. Ask. Then lead the way. Yeah, okay, this way. He takes me over to the big boxy utility vehicle. It's showing its age, but it has an undeniable vintage charm. They definitely don't make them like this anymore. Yes! Don't worry, I took care of most of the safety recalls. Wait, what? <laughs> this one opens up the door for me as I hop in. Though it emits a suspiciously noxious looking plume of smoke from the exhaust. 
and the suspension seems more suited for a bouncy house than a vehicle traversing asphalt roadways. Just this car makes a short trip to a nearby park without incident. And here we are. We climb out of the car, and I follow Justin around to the trunk, where he got a cooler and other picnic essentials packed up and ready to go. I hope you brought your appetite. Hmm. I hope all the cooking classes I took paid off. You can cook. I took cooking classes. So what culinary delight did you learn how to make from your cooking classes to share with us today? Sandwiches. Hell yeah. I don't like bread, but fuck yeah. He has me a large folded up blanket as he grabs the cooler and we head toward the entrance of the park. We pass through an old wrought iron gate, a placard affixed to the front, so rusted and worn that the writing was no longer legible, followed along a leafy tree lined path. So, did. Oh. So, how did you find this place? I used to pass this place on my way to juggling club meetings, but I never found an excuse to check it out before. Juggling club? I had to give it up after a while. It was too much to have up in the air. I hate you. I guess I could say you really dropped the ball. I really just said that. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. After a short walk, we reach an open grassy area. It's a peaceful setting, with a sort of Victorian romance about it. Hey, check out that monument. Off to the side, there's an old stone pavilion. A little run down, but still looking very stately and impressive. This place must be really old. I thought you has been here for a long time. Hey! Why don't you go see what it's all about when I get things set up for lunch? She has the blanket and starts unpacking things from the cooler while I wander across the clearing to take a closer look. Oh, I think I see some writing. I give him a writing report as I inspect the placard on one of the columns. What does it say? Dedicated to the family of the Honorable and Splendiferent Augustus von Pompus, 1685-1747 and his descendants by his great 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 grandson the venerable and most pious Magnussen von Pompus II 1812 to 1879 to mark their final earthly resting place final earthly resting place hey Tristan self setting up it comes over to join me I think this place is a graveyard. I know, right? Not another living soul in sight. No, I mean, it's a literal graveyard. Like, I hope you brought enough to serve three, because Jasper, the amicable spirit, might be joining us to eat. Chris is off setting up and looks around. There are any headstones. Continue reading the rather long, drawn-out history inscribed on the monument. Something about not giving in to the wiles of puritanical vanity. So, so this whole area is an old time cemetery. Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm definitely starting to come to a realization I have made a small miscalculation in planning. Honestly, I don't think I've ever had a picnic in real life. Let's fucking go. Simulation. Oh no. I think it's cool to have a picnic in a place like this. Did you know that a long time ago, memorial parks like this were very popular places for recreation? We just look around. Th that's nice. But I'd like if we didn't run into any ghosts today. He's visibly uncomfortable, looking around nervously. Tristan, are you afraid of ghosts? Um... I prefer to call it a healthy aversion to unexplained supernatural phenomenon. We could just find another place to picnic. Parks, parks. There's gotta be a park that isn't haunted anywhere around here somewhere. The place across the street from my apartment. We'll have to fight for a space with yoga and the park people though. We'll make it work. I'm really sorry about this. We'll quickly pack up and leave the Van Pompous family behind. Loading back into Tristan's car. We 
But this time, when he tries to start it, he only succeeds in making the ignition produce a terrible series of clicking noises as he turns the key. <laughs> Should I call for a tow truck? No, 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 no. I've got it. I, I, I can fix it. He pulls a lever to unlatch the hood and hops out again. I'm scurrying him from my view after he opens it. I can still hear him grumbling to himself. I couldn't even get this right. One simple thing. Loud banging sound comes from the Endrick apartment as Tristan keeps talking to himself as he tries to beat his car into submission. I guess. The impact sending jolts to the car. Stupid. Stupid. Useless. No. Each word comes accompanied with a clang. Produce. Oh. Punctuating the blows. Hold my eyes a little. I pull out my phone and look up a garage. Hi. Is this his garage? Yep, that's us. I think we're having a problem with my car. We're Good out. Good for nothing. Then he abruptly stops as Tristan's cut off cry of pain. The Van Pompous Cemetery on Park Street. Okay, gotta go by. Got the phone and hurry out of the car. Tristan, you okay? Found him standing in front of the engine, clutching his hand as a bright red line spreads across his open palm. Everything is under control. It definitely isn't. Go out to the car and get a bottle of water from the trunk. Then I get my purse of fish out of pack of tissues. Looking around, I spot a green handkerchief tied to the rearview mirror. I grab that too before returning to Tristan. Come here and sit down. He follows my instructions and plops down to the curb. I sit next to him. Give me your hand. He holds out his injured hand. I open the bottle of water and use it to wash with the cut. It's long, but it doesn't seem very deep. Take out the tissues. Wetting them up and pressing them into his palm to staunch the bleeding. Drawing a quiet hiss of pain from the massing beside me. <sighs> Sorry, almost done. I took the handkerchief and wrap it around his hand a few times, tying it firmly in place with a knot. He sits quietly until I finish tending to his injury before he finally speaks. Um. Thanks for taking care of me, but I don't have anything to offer you, you know. What are you talking about? For this, for today, for a week ago. Any of it. Just an associate at the Paris store. Before that, it was a burger joint. Before that, I sold flood insurance door to door. Flood insurance. The biggest body of water in town barely qualifies as a pond. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. So I can't go anywhere anymore. So... I don't have anything to offer you. I wasn't good enough to hold things together in my first marriage. I can't quantify much that that's really changed since then. I'm stuck, figuratively and literally. You shouldn't be wasting your time with me. He looks totally defeated, shoulders slumped as he sits hunched over on the curb, not making eye contact. I take his bandaged hand between my own, fusing with the corners of the handkerchief. Do you know who I am? Iris. Ah ha. Oh yes, but more importantly, you're talking to a, the temporary manager at the DOE company, and there's nothing that screams career success and stability like having a non-permanent part right in your job title. And that means I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going either. He looks up at me. Maybe we're supposed to try to figure it out together. You'd want that? I think so. And I think that even though I haven't known you very long, well, today hasn't been my most traditional date on record. Everything feels like an adventure with when I'm with you, and I really like that. And I really like you. Justin takes this in for a bit, then smiles. And I really like you too. Fuck yeah. I leave my arm through his and lean my head on his shoulders. Her date had, hasn't gone according to plan. But I'm not sure I'd have it any other way. While we're still on the subject, another thing I don't know is what we're going to do now. He rests his head against mine, as we continue to sit on the curb, the fading afternoon sun dappled by the tree lining the street. I called a tow truck. I'm pretty sure they're on their way. As a fun cue, the repair truck pulls up behind Tristan's car and a young man pops out.
Got some trouble with the car. Kristen helps me up from the ground with a good hand. Not just the car. That's a good place to start. Heart. Eyeballs. The day went well. It was a little unconventional, but so was he. I had fun, so much fun. Good. So are you to a thing, or...? Absolutely. We'll be going on another date. He's charming. And lost. Like me! Iris. It's true, and you know it. But now... Maybe we have a chance to find ourselves together. It's so sweet. Best of luck, Iris. Let me know how your next date goes. Of course. Tristan, chapter 5. <clears throat> I feel like these chapters are really short. The next day, Tristan and I reset on our picnic date. Even though Theo was able to get Tristan's car running again, we opt to have our lunch in the relative safely at the park across the street from my apartment. Got it. Like it? Basket? Yes! Sunscreen? Sunscreen? Are you seriously planning to sit outside all afternoon and not wear any sunscreen? So... Well, I th that's... I can go see stutters. It's fine, I got some. We're all set then. We share a nice, normal lunch of chips and sandwiches that Tristan packed. Wow, this is really good. I'm glad you enjoy it. Looks my cooking classes paid off after all. Say, Tristan. How many hobbies do you have exactly? Um... I don't have an exact figure handy, but best estimate. He takes the time to count up his hobbies, and notice a rustling in the bushes across the way behind him. Hmm? Tristan, look. It's the cat! Hello! Oh, it's a cat! Hello! Oh, it's you. I've seen this cat before. The night we met, in fact. I think it might be a stray. Cat sizes us up with an appropriate amount of feline contempt before it deems us worthy of its presence. Presence, apparently, as it continues walking in our general direction. <gasps> They're coming this way! Dude, Tristan and I are the same! <laughs> we do the same shit! <laughs> Every time the cat chooses me, I go, <gasps> Wow! He hisses at me urgently. What should we do? You should let the cat. Offer him a bit of chicken? I tell as the cat strolls over to him, sniffing a bit before it sits back on its haunches? Looking at Tristan expectantly with his big round blue eyes. Hello, tiny transients. Is the lady right? Have you come to sing for your supper? <laughs> because of her loudly and represent against Tristan and me. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Looks like you have a new friend. Tristan offers the cat a small piece of chicken while we finish our own lunches, which he quickly devours from his hand without complaint. Hmm. So I've seen this cat around before. He doesn't have an owner. He's not wearing a collar. Why? Are you thinking he about taking him home? He looks too well kept to be a stray. Kristen seems to seriously be considering this. Then he finishes his meal. Cat has moved on to make himself perfectly comfortable, curled up at Kristen's at Tristan's side. Sorry, I can't read. I've never had a pet before. What if I'm not any good at it? I think you could be a great caretaker, and you have me to help you too. He reaches across the blanket to tangle his fingers in mine, giving me a bright smile. Yes. I think it's settled then. I'm looking forward to your transformation to a full blown cat dad. He seems to let it sink in for a while while softly petting the cat. It'll be a temporary. on a temporary basis, of course. At least until I can confirm that I'm not stealing you from some unknown apartment dweller. How exciting! Let's see. Here you get some food, bowls, toys, a cute little cat bed. Cat tree. Another heart. Yes! Party poppers. 
a year ago. I d- b- d- b- b- <laughs> Excuse? A year ago, I took a chance of starting over in a new town. I first started in a fresh place. From an exciting, glamorous new existence as a... Well... So you're saying that you wish to resign your position as a temporary manager? Yep, that's what I'm saying. Our standard company procedure dictates that, in such an event, you give at least seven months of notice. Oh, well that all sounds very official, but I'll be leaving in two weeks. Are you sure we can entice you in this day with an offer of semi-permanent employment? As something as that might seem, thanks but no thanks. As I get the phone, I feel a small twinge of regret. Even though I'm not sad to be leaving the job itself, I held it during a time in my life when some very important things happened. Did you give them their bad news? The voice of one of those very important things registers close to my ear, accompanied by a pair of warm arms winding their way around my middle. Tristan presses a soft kiss below my ear before he rests his chin on my shoulder. Yep, well done. We're at last. How did your class registration go today? I got all my first choices, except for one. <sighs> Math for the liberal arts was only available at 7.30 a.m. Now, That means I have to get up super early on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next couple of months. However, will his highness, Lord Emmett Supreme of the Universe, ever be able to deal with such a devastating change in his delicate daily routine? Um... That's a very touchy subject. After hearing a fraction of his many titles announced, a blob of white fur appears at my feet. I scoop down and pick up the cat, facing him with a stern look. Your old man is going back to school. Are you going to be a good boy and not give him too much of a hard time about it? As I question him, he follows along very seriously, his big blue eyes hanging on my every word, purring furiously all the while. See? No complaints. Puts the cat back down on the floor, where he continues his royal percussion to park himself upon the throne of his window perch. I turn myself in Tristan's arms to face him, wrapping my arms around his neck. What about you? Do you have a complaint? I guess I could just stop staying over on Tuesdays and Thursdays for a while. Not stop, that tickles. It's coming as a brace, that's really trying and failing to evade the treacherous torture of his fingers. Mercilessly tickling me at this my suggestion of few sleepovers. Truce, truce. <laughs> I won't let you get away so easily. I continue to feign a struggle, but my arms never stopped holding on to him. And he won't get rid of me so easily. I lean up on my tiptoes and press my lips to his, stopping Tristan in his track before he melts into melts into it, his arms wrapping him more tightly around me as he deepens the embrace. As I met Tristan, someday became my everyday. Um... What is this room? I, I feel I feel like we, we may need to do a little... A, a little bit of zhuzhing. Just a little. I think with Tristan is an adventure in a lot of ways. But sharing a bed with him is an experience on a whole other level. The man is a heat-seeking magnet, boyfriend-shaped barnacle, veritable velcro. No matter the temperature, even on the hottest, most humid depths of summer, I might have fall asleep at separate sides of the bed without touching. It had become second nature to wake up with Tristan draped on, under or around me, having inevitably gravitated toward each other while to sleep and arranging ourselves in a chaotic tumble of limbs. Not that I'm complaining, but it does make waking up in the absence of such disregard of personal space somewhat jarring. So it's not surprising when I wake up on this particular morning feeling a bit cold and alone. Tristan? I'm out of bed, throwing off the heavy covers and look around at the mess. We haven't been here very long, and the process of unpacking and getting settled in 
in Getty Little Den has few things a bit unorganized. Follow the trail of carelessly discarded shoes, both mine and his, through the space toward the kitchen. I hear a familiar voice through the doorway. The recipe calls for half a cup, but in this case, more's better, don't you think? <laughs> I talk to I talk to Pepper like this all the time. You can have too much of a good thing. Sounds fake to me. I talk with my cat like this all the time. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll follow the instructions. No, we won't. I sneak up in the doorway, finding Tristan engaging in a very serious conversation with the small, yet no less demanding for his lack of bulk, white fuzzball of a cat, perched on the counter next to him, primarily seated at its haunches. <laughs> Look at us, just a couple of guys living the dream. You used to live alone on the street, and I, well, I had an apartment, but I was alone too. But now we have each other. And Iris. Good morning. The purse. The purse. Ah! Look at that! Look at that! So fucking cry. I love him. Oh God. I blew my cover. Swimming into the kitchen like I only just walked down the stairs. I gave Tristan a peck on the cheek, surveying the bowl and the other cooking implements scattered across the counter. Hey! Good morning. You're cooking. Chocolate chip pancakes. I looked up a recipe. I mean, the cat's helping. He's been keeping me on the straight and narrow. It looks great. Can I help? I wanted to bring you breakfast in bed. I can go back to bed if you want. You can even come with me. Have a catch my drift. I hate it here. <clears throat> In spite of myself, my stomach growls. But maybe after breakfast? After breakfast? Just in good end. Happy at home with our Dr. Fluffy cat child. And now he has color! Yay! We did it! <laughs> oh... God, that did not take long at all. <clears throat> Alright, well, I guess for this game we'll go through all the other routes. I think I might go with TikToker over here next. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you later.